All right, everybody, uh, welcome to our first real uh, physics unit of the year. We are going to be starting a unit called uh, kinematics, and right now we're going to look at kinematics in one dimension. A little later on, we'll expand that and look at kinematics in two dimensions. Um, to start off with, we're going to have a, a bunch of sort of vocabulary that we have to get used to that we're going to use in physics all the time. Um, and so we're going to talk about quantities a lot in physics. And a quantity is anything that you can measure. So temperature, time, force, energy. These are things that often have numbers associated with them and units. Um, and so there are two kinds of quantities that we're going to look at in great deal. And we're going to treat them very differently. And those are something called scalars and vectors. And so the first one here, a scalar quantity, is um, something that has only a magnitude. And magnitude is really just another word for an amount. So an example of something that has only, something you can measure that has only a magnitude would be like time. Time, um, measured in seconds or whatever else, just has an amount. Uh, temperature is another one. And also, as we'll learn, distance. If we compare that to the other kind of quantity that we're going to look at, the other thing we can have is something called a vector. Now, a vector has a magnitude or an amount, and it also has another piece of information with it, and it has a direction. So the direction of the vector is going to matter. Um, so an example of something that would be a vector would be force. Right? When you push something, it doesn't just matter how hard you push it, but also which way. That's going to change how it behaves. Um, and we'll learn something called displacement. It's also a vector. So we represent, um, we represent vectors as arrows. And we're going to do some examples of what I mean by that. But because it basically because it has a direction implied, when we draw them, we can draw them as arrows that point in the direction that they're working. So our first two, uh, our first two scalar and vector quantities I mentioned already is, are distance and displacement. So distance, we use the symbol d, and distance is literally just um, how far something has moved. And because we're just looking at how far something's moved, 8 meters or 20 kilometers or whatever it is, we don't really care where it went. And so distance is a scalar. Um, displacement, on the other hand, it sounds a lot like distance, but we're going to has a very similar symbol. It is written with the symbol D, but it often has this little arrow. I call it like a little arrow hat that sits on top of it. And that is telling us something. That arrow is telling us that it is a vector. So displacement is really a change in position. And basically we're saying it's not just how far you've moved, but where you went. Did you start at the origin and then move to x equals 5? Well, then you moved 5 steps in the positive. Did you move to x equals negative 6? Well, then you move 6 steps in the negative. There's going to be a direction that's implicit with that displacement. And so displacement is a vector. So to see how this might uh, play out um, differently, uh, imagine this. A student, um, a student walks five meters east and then three meters west, keeping the math nice and simple, what is the distance traveled? Well, the distance traveled, the total distance, I'll put a little t here for total, would just be d1 plus d2. And so that would just be, well, they walked five meters and then they walked another three meters, so that's a total of eight meters. That's how far they went. But if we were to ask what is the student's displacement, well, um, that's a little bit more complicated. Now, I'm actually going to draw a picture here. I know you probably know the answer because you're so smart, but I'm going to draw a picture to prove a point. The addition that I'm going to do here now is something called a vector addition. So to find the total displacement, that's going to be displacement 1 plus displacement 2. And the way I would represent that is I would represent that with arrows. So displacement 1, uh, if you remember, was 5 meters to the east. Now. Um, we're always, just for your own benefit, we're always going to kind of assume the top of the page is north, 
So never eat shredded wheat. And so northeast, southwest, you might want to remember that. If, their first, um, if the first thing they did was walk to the east five meters, I would draw that as an arrow going to the right. And it's going to have a length that is going to be five. So that's five meters. That vector represents my first displacement. Um, but then the next thing they do is they turn around and they walk back to the west, three meters. So after walking five meters east, they walk back to the west. And so where this vector ends, at the tip of that one arrow, I'm going to start my next arrow and I'm going to start going back. And because it's only three meters, it's going to be a little bit shorter. It doesn't have to be perfect, but roughly to scale works. And so this picture here, I can see what they did. They started here. They ended up over here. But they walked to the right, and then walked to the east, and walked to the west. So if we want to find the total displacement, then what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well, I started at the start and I finished at the finish. So my total overall vector looks like this. This re vector right here represents the total displacement. And you can see it's still overall pointing to the east because I didn't walk back as far as, as I initially walked over. And so visually, you can look at this and say, well, D total must just be two meters, but I can't leave it there because which way do we go? Two meters east. Okay, so this may seem like a little bit of overkill, but we're going to get into vector problems that are obviously more challenging than this. And so whenever you're adding vectors, we're always going to use the tip to tail method. And what that means is you draw your first vector and where the tip of that arrow ends, that's where you start your next vector. You don't draw one arrow and then jump back and draw the next arrow. That doesn't really make sense. So we draw one arrow and where that one ends, that's where we start the next one. Okay, so um, there's another example here and this would be a great chance for you to just really quickly hit pause in the video. Just try that and then hit unpause and see how you did. And now that you've unpaused it, because you definitely did that, um, let's take a look. So we've got a, a polar bear <clears throat> meanders east 275 meters and then turns around and ambles it's a very jaunty bear uh, 425 meters to the west um, total distance traveled well total distance we saw is just going to be d1 plus d2 which is 275 meters plus 425 meters so that is going to end up being 700 meters now a couple things about this um, I don't need to include a direction because it doesn't matter I guess if we're being super picky we would look at that and say, mm, that doesn't have the right number of sig figs because this be, these both have sig figs to the ones place and this doesn't. So I might just put a little dot there, a little decimal that tells the world, oh, 700 right to the meter. Um, and then what was the bear's displacement? So let's draw a picture. Well, the bear went 275 meters east. So start starting here, went east 275. And then where that arrow ends, I'm going to draw this arrow going to the west, 425. And then, so what did they do? Well, they started at the start, and then they went to the finish. So start at the start, go to the finish. And then this is my total displacement, right? Which we could see is, well, it's really the difference between 275 and 425. So really, if you think about it, this 275 is to the right, so really that's like a positive 275. That 425 to the left, well that's really just a negative 425. And you can see that if I include that negative sign in my 425, 275 plus um, negative 425 gives me negative 150 meters. So there's two ways we could write that. We could write that as 150 meters to the west. And if you just looked at that picture, visually, you can just see that that's the answer. And that's great. That would be the same thing as saying negative 150 meters. You wouldn't have to say negative 150 west. It'd kind of be like a double negative. So either one is fine. And just to kind of prove a point, when we do vector addition, as long as we include the directions, when we do a vector addition, positive 275 plus negative 425 is going to equal negative 150 meters. So we can see we get the exact same answer. Okay, Just a quick little visual for you to look at here. So just to remind you the difference between distance and displacement, right? It doesn't matter how you get there. You just add up your distance. You keep on adding it up and adding it up. Whereas the displacement, um, it doesn't matter what you did. Where did you start and where did you finish? That's all that matters in that calculation. Okay.
So we're going to look at, we're going to, we're gonna, I know I said this unit was going to be vectors in, um, or kinematics in one dimension, but I am going to just, we're going to look ahead a little bit at what happens when we go into 2D, just to kind of consider this situation. So imagine we've got a little girl takes her dog for a walk around a city block as shown. So she, she starts here, goes to A, then to B, then to C, and then back home. And the block um, measures as such. So what is the distance traveled by this girl? Well, I guess the total distance would just be 115 plus 125 plus 115 plus 125. So that is going to be 480 meters. And again, I might just put a decimal there just so my sig figs line up with my original information. Okay, so what is her total final displacement? Well, she started at the start, went to A to B to C and then back to the beginning. Well, at the end of the day, her total final displacement was zero because it doesn't matter what she did in the meantime where did she start where did she finish if I drew an arrow from start to finish it would have a length of zero so that's it so that was easy but what about this one right here what is her displacement at point B so imagine she starts here and walks to A and then walks to B and then we need to find her total displacement so I'm gonna draw a picture that's gonna help me kind of um, analyze that so the first thing she did was she went 115 meters this way. And then she went 125 meters that way. And so this was the start and this was the finish. And so what I wanna do is I wanna show her total displacement. I start at the start and I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw an arrow that goes to the finish. Now this represents her total displacement. This has another word, which I just want you to get start to get used to. That is also called the resultant. And the key word in that is result. So the resultant vector is the one that when we add everything up, what's left over? What is the result? Okay, so I need to find that. Now, as luck should have it, I know this is a right angle triangle. So I could find the length of this arrow pretty easily by using some Pythagoras. I can see that uh, D total squared is just going to equal 115 squared plus 125 squared. So D total is going to equal the square root of 115 squared plus 125 squared. And so I'm going to need my calculator for that one. So I'm just going to use this here. So I'm going to take the square root. So second function um, squared gives me the square root sign. Uh, 115 squared plus 125 squared. And if I hit enter, I get 169.8. So 169.85. And I'm going to round that off to, um, to three sig figs, I guess. So I'll call it 170. But I'm going to put a little dot there just so that I know that I measured the zero. And my units, of course, are meters. And really quickly, just looking at that, that's a number that makes sense, right? If, if one side of my triangle, right angle triangle is 115, the other side is 125, 170 makes sense because it's bigger than the other two. So I know I'm on the right track. But here's the problem I want you to consider, that this number on its own doesn't answer the question. This doesn't tell us anything about um, how uh, where the girl is. It tells us how far away from home she is but it doesn't tell us which direction she went. And if we want to show the direction, well then we have to include that somehow in this number. Now, if you think back to the previous example, when we were just going left and right or east and west, you could just say plus or minus for your direction. When you get into two dimensions, it's not that simple because, well, if this is the positive x direction, that's the negative x direction, positive y and negative y, what happens if you go down this way? Or what happens if you go up this way? Plus and minus doesn't work. In fact, in two dimensions, there's an infinite possible number of uh, directions you could point. You could be pointing any which way. So plus and minus just doesn't cut it. Um, and so we have to use angles. And so that's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this angle right here. I'm gonna find that angle and report that. As, um, as, as the direction that the, the girl traveled. So again, I can use my Sokotoa, maybe I'll use tan. So the tan of theta will equal opposite over adjacent, so 125 over 115. So then theta will equal uh, inverse tan of 125 over 115. And so again, my calculator, uh, inverse tan is just second function tan. 
and then I can just put 125 divided by 115 and hit enter and I get a really weird answer and actually this is good this is a, this is a great mistake to make because it just reminds me that what I've done is I've left this in radian modes and if you ever get a really weird angle like 0.8 it doesn't look like 0.8 to me I'm probably in the wrong mode so I'm gonna go over to radian I'm gonna hit enter here and I'm gonna change it to degree I can go back and do the same thing and see if I get something that makes more sense. So that was inverse tan, 125 divided by 115. And 47 degrees. Yeah, that looks like a 47 degree angle. That makes way more sense to me. Whoops, 47 degrees. So my final answer is 170 meters, 47 degrees. So one, one last problem. I have to tell you where the degrees are measured from and where they're going. So I will say this, if you were to give me this answer right here, if you gave me that answer and you gave me that picture, I could look at the answer and look at the picture and go, oh, that's theta, theta is 47, perfect, that makes sense to me. But just so you have a way of describing it in words, what we would say is we would say that that angle is south of east. We're going to come back to that in a second, but that angle we would describe as south of east. Now that is my complete answer. That tells the whole story. Okay, so really quickly on that whole south of east thing, um, when you want to describe angles with words, imagine the following angles here. We've got a bunch of angles. What you want to do is you want to look at the direction that the um, vector is pointing. So in this case, my vector is kind of pointing that way. And you want to look at which direction is a reference. So you can see that this dotted line right here is that's really east. Okay. So to make this angle, I had to start on this dotted line and I had to turn this way. I had to go, I had to kind of go mm, like that. So which way did I turn? Well, if this is east, I had to turn north of east to end up pointing this way. So this angle we would describe as north of east. East. Now each of these angles is something of something, something of something. And again, I would suggest maybe try and hit pause and see if you can think of what those are and then come back and see if you got the right answer. Okay. Um, welcome back. So this angle right here, we can see we're pointing north and then we turn this way. So we're starting north and the second direction is always where you start. So we're going to move away from north. And which way we're going to move? We're going to move west of north. So that angle will be west of north. This angle, we're kind of starting south, starting downwards. So we're going to start, we're going to move away from south and we move this way. So that's east, east of south. This angle right here would be west of south. This angle would be starting north and moving east of north. And then this last one here would be starting west and moving north of west okay so that's it for um, for vectors in one dimension lucky you you've got a little worksheet right here that you can uh, use to practice your skills a reminder when you do this worksheet i want to see a vector diagram for each one even the easy ones where it's in one dimension i want you to draw an arrow and then draw the other arrow and find the total and of course you have to do it when you get to the more challenging ones that get into two dimensions okay so good luck with that okay bye